split into her three bodies. <laughs> it's very hard. I live in a bubble. <laughs> started on time. Um, I am excited to have Josh Mancuso with the High Road Agency. Uh, they have been a partner coming up this year for us and I know for myself this is a topic that I am very much interested in because as you know we live stream these workshops and also put them on YouTube so marketing them to help small business owners and agencies in the area take advantage is one of the things that I'm hoping to take lots of notes. Speaking of notes, I hope everyone was able to pick up a copy of the presentation. Thanks, Josh, for uh, sharing those. But before we get started, it's always good to find out the synergies in our room. So let's go around the room, introduce yourselves, um, and tell us why or how you want to use uh, video marketing, which was going to help uh, Josh in doing his presentation. I'll start out. I'm Sandy Ratliff. I'm with Virginia Community Capital. I am one of the partners in this new knowledge program with the Washington County uh, Chamber of Commerce, the Virginia Highlands Small Business Incubator, and Virginia Highlands Community College. And this is, it's hard to believe, uh, now we're on our fourth year, going on our fifth year of doing these programs. <coughs> um, and we can only do it with partnerships of folks like Josh, um, small business entrepreneurs, and community leaders to, because uh, we don't charge a big price to uh, for admission for this, so we have to we have to rely on the generosity of our partners, so uh, that's who I am, and we'll turn it over. Let's go around the room and introduce yourself. I'm Ginger Bowman. I work in Occupational Enterprises. We have like a little uh, thrift shop called Bargain Basement. Um, really wanted to learn more about like the Facebook Live and maybe doing some videos for the school. Okay. And I'm Felicia McNabb. I'm the Executive Director of Occupational Enterprises. And in addition to the store, we have have other things upcoming. We have a, a, a raffle that we want to do with the live drawing. Right. <laughs> right. Figure out how to do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm Jenna Reedy, and I'm with the Margaret Reed Mitchell Spay Neuter Clinic. And um, I do the marketing and uh, advertising. We just want to make our Facebook page more interactive and um, use uh, more exciting marketing and advertising. Is, that, is, Abingdon, is everybody in from Abingdon? No. 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 So we got St. Paul, okay. we've got Saltville. They're all oh, great. Saltville. Very yeah. Are you Saltville? Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, so I have a friend in Saltville. Okay. Victoria Pleasure, I'm from Massachusetts. I just had a year old business, uh, Two Books Publishing. Crash our party. That's yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. We want lots of questions from you. Okay. <laughs> oh, man, I'm nervous. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe I should offer video marketing just yet. So. Oh, really? You can put videos on our website and on Facebook. People will do them all for like taking videos. For others, yeah. yeah. And I'm Deborah McCrossey. I'm Kathy Stewart. I'm the Caitlin, oh, we got <laughs> no, I'm Kim Ricky. I'm a camera 
Maybe so. <laughs> Thank you. I'm David Osu with Managed Partnership, where we provide professional services. And part of my interest here is uh, working with Grand Bible College in Bristol. I don't know if, you, if you're at all familiar with Grand Bible, which is about 65 years old. Something like that. Uh, but it's kind of small, but we'd like to learn more about sharing uh, and the younger people can do things like that. Uh, cool. I'm Harrison. I'm a student. I'm here to learn video marketing in case I ever start a business or work in a business environment where I can use this. Awesome. I'm John Baldwin. Um, I'm here from the perspective of not for profit for professional association benefits and community association. And the day of information and video overload of looking for strategies to get video the right target audience for the value proposition. I'm Kate Water. I'm a person who trusts company in the marketing department. Uh, we're discussing a YouTube channel. Our degree in I actually use Compass and we're active in working on the work of the complexes. And I'm here at Florida to play out it on the Bristol yesterday and talk about it. Mainly it's kind of a personal development thing. Um, I'm from the theater, I'm from the theater. She got his big plans for us, but I think we stopped ourselves. So I'm really kind of just kind of a personal growth thing. Yeah. I'm Nancy Walker. I'm with the Southwest Virginia Hospital of Compassion. I've been in trouble in the past. You know, for you. Chris Lane, uh, have a small business here in Abbott, so it's a rich kind of food. So, yeah. <laughs> Use it. So, uh, you know, it's very, uh, I figured, video media, and help, help grow the business a little bit since it is very visual, demonstrative, show what we do, and kind of just do some exposure and teach people a little, about, a little bit about what we do. Cool. Great. Ask Josh lots of questions. That's what we're here for. And, um, Hopefully you'll get enough out of this today that you'll want to continue on because we do this almost every Wednesday. So uh, take advantage of Josh's time. So thank you, Josh. Yep, thank you guys for having me. Um, yeah, this is exciting. I'm glad to be here. Is everybody excited? Are we, I mean, we got a few people eating lunch. Did you guys eat lunch already before you came? Okay. Um, well, continue to eat. Don't, don't mind us. We're just going to have a presentation here. You feel free to chew loudly or whatever you need to okay. do. It's fine. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't take myself too seriously, or probably you guys too seriously, so don't, uh, I like to have some fun, so I don't want to be boring, um, and make you sit and listen to me for a long time. Um, I do have a lot of information I'm probably going to dump on you, so if you're taking notes, you'll want to, you know, there's a lot in the presentation that you can just read, but if you want to take extra notes, that would be, that would be fine. Um, what else was I going to say here at the beginning? Um... I do have one thing to give away. It's nothing exciting, but it is a. Um, um, our old name was Hyro Digital, and now we are the Hyro Agency. Um, and so, uh, this is a notebook, journal with a pen and pad. So, my question, if anybody knows the answer to this, is um, what is the number two uh, used search engine online? I bet you know what number one is. Google. What's number two? Yeah. Who? What? Yeah. YouTube, yes. Did somebody say YouTube besides saying? Yes, YouTube. So, <laughs> I'm sure the lady that puts it on wins the prize, huh? Yeah. Ask another question later. Oh my gosh. Okay, so yeah, I work for the Howard Agency. Uh, we're a marketing firm in Johnson City. Our office is in downtown Johnson City. And um, I forgot my clicker, so I'm going to hit the button each time i got to do this. A um, little bit about us. Uh, we're a full-service marketing agency, so we do everything in the marketing world. That includes um, social media marketing, um, website design and development, do a lot of that. Uh, we do search engine marketing, so you know, Google AdWords, uh, things, things of that nature. Um, uh, graphic design, uh, video production, photography, um, anything digital related. I mean, we kind of specialize in that digital marketing. But we also do old school, traditional stuff, TV, radio. Sorry I called you old school. 
TV, uh, newspaper, radio, those methods are still effective and so we still do that, um, media buying, and, and we do those things as well for, for companies. So we, have, we work with a lot of small businesses that, are, that um, are very small, just starting out, and we work with large companies as well. So we kind of run the, the spectrum there um, for our client base. We're about five years old, well, not even five years old, uh, so we're pretty young, and we've grown exponentially um, you know, from a um, $250,000 company to a $3 million company. And, We've gone from two employees to 13 or 14 employees, and so we've grown quickly, and a lot of that is because there's a need for what we're doing. Uh, there's a need for digital marketing and for people to be along the cutting edge, and we try to be on the cutting edge of marketing. And so um, we, um, we do that, and um, that's a little bit about us. Um, I'll give you a little bit about me, just just because you want to know who you're talking to. Um, a little bit, again, my name is Josh Mancuso, I work for the Howard Agency. Uh, this is me and my sweet family, uh, my wife Anna, uh, and my two girls, Amelia, Ella, and then the baby, uh, Sophia. Uh, so all girls, um, even my cat is a girl, I have just no chance at home, it is rough. Um, so that is me, I don't want to bore you with pictures of my family or show off my family, it's my beautiful wife there. That's my baby, oh, how'd that get in there, I don't know. that's my little baby. Uh, anyways, there's, oh there's my other two there, I just, just happen to get in there as well. Um, so, who am I? I'm a partner success manager at the higher agency. I don't know what that means. Um, I started out as a digital marketing consultant and then I got a, uh, as a promotion of sorts in which they changed my title to partner success manager. So my job is really part sales, it is to go out and it is to bring in new business and it is also to manage that business and manage client relationships at I wrote it. Uh, I occasionally get to dip into uh, the world of production, video production, that's kind of my specialty. Um, and so I'm kind of all over the place uh, at, at High Road. I'm also an entrepreneur and business owner myself. I own a side business. Um, previously to my uh, time at High Road, which has been almost two years now, I was a, a business owner. I had my own video production company uh, for three years. Um, and then I had the opportunity to essentially merge that company with, with High Road, and I did so. Um, before that, um, I was a marketing director for a nonprofit uh, Christian camp, Dover River Gorge. Has anybody heard of Dover Gorge? It's in Hampton, Tennessee. I was their marketing director. And uh, before that, plenty of other things. But I've got, you know, 10 years or so of experience in marketing and video. Um, I do some filmmaking and acting on the side. Um, I got my degree from uh, Emory Henry College, just up the road, um, back in 2003. I graduated in four years, miraculously. And uh, I got a master's in leadership uh, from Luther Rice, which is a school in the, in the Atlanta area. Um, so that's a little bit about me. And uh, so you know who you're dealing with. Now let's get to the reason why we are here, video marketing. So just to define video marketing, what is it? It is simply harnessing the power and technology of video to do three things. To tell your story, to promote your business, and grow your brand. Um, storytelling is, is key. And, and, and that's something I want you to walk away with nothing else that I say is that if you're going to use video at all, you've got to tell a compelling story. If you can't be boring, it can't be average, it's got to be good. Um, it's got to be good. Um, and if it is, you use it to promote your business and your brand will in fact grow. All that, at the end of the day, you can make lots of great videos and they can be cute and funny, they can be really informative, they can be really well done, but if it doesn't eventually get you an ROI, it doesn't really help you that much. So if there are videos that you do, that maybe don't initially give you ROI, maybe just be brand building or um, just exposure, but at the end of the day, you're gonna wanna translate the effort, that time, those dollars into a revenue at the end. I'll show you a little bit later on, on how that is possible. Um, so that is video marketing. Um, the big question that I ask with almost anything um, is, is, is why. And so I've, I've spoken to a number of groups like this about this exact topic and what I feel like small business owners feel, and I don't know if you feel this way or not, you can tell me, but I feel like um, in nonprofits, all you guys, it, you feel like you have so much that you have to do and so much that you were told you need to do. Um, I've got to be on Facebook. I've got to be on Twitter. I've got to be on Instagram now. I've got to be doing Snapchat, whatever the heck that is. I've got to be doing all kinds of things. Um, let me try to run my business and I've got to do all this stuff and now you're telling me I've got to make videos. Um, and so, it could be overwhelming, uh, I think, because it may feel like that a little bit, like it's overwhelming the number of things you have to do. Um, 
Well, I'm going to tell you why you need to use video um, and you need to use it as quickly as possible. Um, and number one is if you want to stay relevant as a business, as an individual, even as a, as a company, as a nonprofit, you don't have a choice. Just to be completely honest, you've got to start using video. Um, you don't have a choice. Uh, video at this point is no longer optional. Um, it, it, it is an integral part. It's not even the, it's, it's not the, the future of marketing, it's the now of marketing. We are already there and it needs to be used now. And so here are some stats to kind of back that statement up. And I don't want to bore you with a bunch of stats. You can go through there, you can look at them later if you want to, but I'll read them off really quick. Some of them are pretty interesting and pretty powerful. Okay, by the end of this year, video will account for 74% of all web traffic. So there's a lot of web traffic out there, so we're talking almost three-fourths of it is going to be video. That's where everything is going, is video. Um, currently, almost 90% of website visitors stay on a website that has video longer than a site without video. So that's for a number of reasons. Obviously, it gets more engaging. I mean, people want to see a video on your site. It also gives you legitimacy and some credibility and clout. Um, this one is, is pretty important. 59% of executives agree that if both text and video are available on the same topic, they are more likely to choose the video. So if you have a website and you've got a bunch of text explaining what you do, uh, it's probably not being read. If you've got a little bit of text and a video, they're probably both being read and watched, I, I would think. Um, but people are going to go to video more times than not. Um, I don't know if you do, I do. Um, if there's a one minute video I can watch, rather than surfing through your website trying to find all your things, I'm going to watch it. It's going to tell me who you are, what you do. Um, you're going to engage me visually and I'm going to be interested. Um, YouTube has over a billion users. That's almost a third of the total internet users. So out of all the people on the internet, a third of them are using YouTube. 45% um, of people watch more than an hour of Facebook or YouTube videos a week. So nearly half the people are spending an hour watching Facebook or YouTube videos. Um, I'm sure some of those are, are cat videos. Some of them are, are real videos that are worth watching. But some cat videos are worth watching, yeah, for sure. Um, uh, on Facebook, a video post you have options to post text, to post photo, to post video, to do a number of things. Um, video post offers 135% uh, greater reach than a post with a photo. So even you know, seven or eight years ago, um, let's say 10 years ago, we were posting text. When Facebook really became, I think I, I got on Facebook in 2006, I think. It was right after, um, it was just for college students, right? And then they opened it up to, to everybody when they saw how much money they were going to make. And so, uh, I remember it was all text. You would just post, you know, hi, I, right now I am going to the grocery store. I mean, it was really silly, but I mean, you were just updating your status of what you were doing. And then Facebook grew. And then five or six years ago, it was like, okay, all your posts need to have photos because photos are engaging. Nobody's reading text. I mean, our attention spans are just dropping by the minute. And so we've got photos we need to look at. And now we're beyond photos. It's, that's a great photo. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, video. And then it comes up, and now we're into video. That's the progression on Facebook that we have seen. Um, and so right now, video is going to give you the best, the best return. Um, and then this is really interesting. More video content is uploaded in 30 days than all of the major U.S. television networks have created in 30 years. Um, so we all grew up having Tide commercials and all the commercials that were, that were big back in those days. And, and uh, I remember the Sears commercials and the... Hills commercial, remember Hills, the department store? I mean, there's all, and, and you know, the big chains had commercials. And now it's all, it's all online. You still have commercials, obviously, but it, you know, the video content is just, is reigning king. So, um, Facebook um, loves video, YouTube is video, all the social media networks love video, and video is just, that's where we are now. Um, so, um, any questions? Yeah. Pouring information on you. Does anybody, anybody, everybody get that? Does anybody, anybody disagree? Say no, video is not. It's not happening. You were wrong, Joshua. Yeah. Okay. Because feel free. For asked to ask questions, and then I will shoot you down. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> guys. You guys. Okay. Uh, second reason why video is so important at this point in time is that it's for search engine optimization. Does anybody know what SEO is? Search engine optimization. 
Some people know, some heads not in, a few people know. Okay. If you don't know what it is, it's SEO, which is basically search engine optimization is um, the, uh, the rankings for which you come up in Google. So if someone is searching for what you do, where you come up in those results is what your search engine optimization is. And so uh, there are things you can do to optimize that. Um, there are things you can do in your website. A lot of things you can do in your website. It's a really complex, deep black hole of, of nerd nerdiness. I mean, getting into that type of stuff. I mean, it's um, it's really beyond me. There, there's a lot that can be done in your website that you can probably do yourself, honestly. Um, uh, and there's a lot that maybe you know, professionals can do. Uh, there's a lot with social media that you can do. There's a lot of things you can do to boost your your rankings, and that's what you want to do because we all know that if you search something in Google. And as it come up on the first page, you're probably not going to keep hitting the next page to get to the next. I mean, I hardly ever go to the second page. I hardly ever go lower than like the first three or four or five um, when I'm searching. Um, so, video actually increases your um, search engine optimization. Um, Google loves video, and so what what that means is if you are searching for something, um, you know, have a tie, a tie. Nothing I've ever searched that or anything, because um, I know how to die, die. Um, I just showed up on the railroad today, just because. Um, how to tie a tie. You could Google that and come up with a lot of different results, but there's probably a lot of videos on how to tie a tie. And so if you are a tie company, you should be making videos on how to tie a tie, because people are searching for that and it's going to pop up. And so you know when you search in Google, it gives you different results, um, like news, images, videos. You can kind of select which ones you want. Having video content is just going to drastically up your results, drastically. And so that is extremely important just for findability, for people who are searching for uh, Kung Fu Studios in this area. I mean, having a video is just going to, I don't know how many Kung Fu Studios there are, but but there's probably more than one. At least there's probably other dojos and other, yeah, there's other martial arts things. So you want to be coming up on the top, and that's going to help you tremendously. Um, later I'll talk to you about that. If you don't have a YouTube account, you need to create one as soon as possible and load it with videos. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, questions? No? Cries of outrage? Okay. Um, all right, my third why is video so important and it is my favorite why which is it is the most effective way for you to connect with your audience on an emotional level and that is so important at this time no matter what you do whether it's a bank or you say how can i connect with somebody emotionally on, on what i do you know there, there are ways um and that comes into the storytelling element that we'll talk about again a little bit later um but you've got to connect with people on an emotional level um Nobody likes being sold to anymore. We're kind of past that. The, the phrase that everyone abides by now in the marketing world is content is king. right? So even beyond that now, obviously, video content is king. So people want to hear a story. They want you to connect with them on an emotional level. That's why Budweiser's Super Bowl ads are Clydesdales and puppies and people are crying. And you're like, well, I'm crying. I don't even drink Budweiser. But I might now because this, really, this is great. So you've got to connect with people on an emotional level. Uh, and for one main reason, emotion equals action. Whether we want to admit it or not, most of us make decisions based on emotion. We try to think that we're level-headed and we make calculated, very good decisions in life, but most of the time we make emotional decisions. Um, even small stuff like what am I, you know, I going to buy, am I going to purchase a, a service that I'm going to go get, um, there's an emotion that is attached to that, and so you got to connect with your audience on an emotional level. Um, otherwise, it's boring, it's average, um, and it's just another sales um, strategy. You've got to get emotional with people. Now, that doesn't always mean make them cry. That could be funny. That could be um, a number of things. Um, so I, I'm going to give you an example here um, of how that works. I would say the proof is in the pudding, right? Um, actually, before my time at High Road, when I had my own production company. Um, I did a video for the Holston Home for Children in Greenville. Is anybody familiar with that place? Okay. So I did a video for them, um, and they came to me, and, and we sat down in a meeting, and, and they said, we just want to tell our story. Um, and I'm sorry I don't have the video. I wish I did um, uh, today. I don't have the video today. But they, they said, we want to tell our story, um, and 
we need this video to be used to raise funds, to just tell people who we are, what we do, all that good stuff. And so they started talking about, okay, what if we did this? What if we had so-and-so talk on camera about, hey, welcome to the Wholesome Home. Here, we do this, and we do this, and we do this. And I was like, eh, nope, um, we're going to stop right there. We're going to tell a story. We need to tell a story. And so the video, if I, if I showed it, and I'm sorry, I'm building it up, you're not even going to get to see it. If I showed it, you would probably be in tears, at least at least close to it, because what we did is rather than than saying, this is what we do, we just showed them. And so we started out, it's just, it was a little bit long, it was three or four minutes long, which is too long at this point, but, but they were using it less online and more in live settings, uh, fundraising, banquets, things like that. Um, so they could have three or four minutes because they had an audience who could not get away. Uh, so <laughs> you, can, you can show longer videos if you have an audience that is trapped. Um, like your trap right now. Um, so the video opens up with a, just shows a, a boy just <laughs> stepping up onto the grounds of Wholesome Home. He's carrying nothing but a, a trash bag that's got some clothes in it like that. He looks kind of tattered and worn down. And it shows him, he comes in and people welcome him in. And he, um, it shows him, you know, changing clothes. And he gets in bed the, the first night away from the home he's come from. Who knows where he's come from. Um, some really bad stuff, and it shows him in bed the first night, like, and his tears fall from his eyes, and then he um, he's struggling in this place. And then over over time, it, you kind of show people investing in him, teachers investing in him, other other uh, kids who were there um, reaching out to him, and you see him growing. And there's there's a big faith element there too. So you see um, the cross element, and you see um, the spiritual uh, side of things. You see all this happening to where he. Then you show at, at the end of the video he's extremely um, happy and he seems way more well, well rounded and he is kind of prepared and to go on with the next stage of life. And so we we show this. There's no words at all. There's just music and there's these images of him going going through there. And it was really really impactful for people. Um, and so we did that for them. They loved it. They loved it. And so as a result, um, you know, they have three annual fundraising dinners. Um, throughout the year, um, and over the past several years, you know they are used to raising between 120,000 and 140,000 every single year. I mean, it's, it's, they're always going to land in that in that world for like the last five or six years. Um, in the first year they used the video, they raised 188,000. You, know, you, know, you can't always directly link that to the video. It's like, hey, we did it with our video, but it was definitely a big part of that success. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Um, you know, they distributed copies of the video to churches. Um, in the area and in the Methodist uh, conference, um, in the first six months, of, uh, church donations went up uh, from three hundred seven thousand uh, dollars to three hundred fifty-five thousand um, dollars. It's a forty-eight thousand dollar increase, and so people were caught by this by this video and by this story, and they saw an increase in online giving by twenty-four percent as well. Um, I mean, they found ways to use the video by you know their board of trustees, uh, new board member orientation. Chamber of Commerce meetings, campus tours, civic club presentations, employee training and orientation, perspective of new foster parents. I mean, they just used the heck out of this thing, and they paid about five thousand dollars for it. And if you add that all up, it's about ninety-three thousand dollars that they got in ROI from that one video. So they used it really well, and they they you know got the most bang for the buck. Um, like I said, I'm, we're not going to take credit for all of that money that they brought in, but there was a definite link between. The increase in giving. We've, I mean, we've been getting getting this for five years. We do an awesome video, and our giving spikes um, by that much. So, um, video is powerful. It has the ability to uh, touch you in ways that nothing else can can touch you. Um, so, that is the the why. So, any questions about that or about? Um, um, why video is important. I think we're all kind of agree on that, I guess. Good, good. All right, so now you're probably wanting to know the how. How do I make these great videos, Josh? Well, you got, you got two options. Okay, you do it or you hire a professional. And, and, and what I'm going to tell you is that you need to probably do both. You probably need to have a healthy balance of both of these things. Um, so... Has anybody, is anybody doing video now for their business or nonprofit? You guys, what are you guys doing currently? What have you been doing? Well, we just recently finished one. We hired a local company. Okay. And uh, he came and did three or four days of 
uh, videotape around town mm -hmm. and filming, and then he put it into a two minute um, marketing piece for the, our town. And we're releasing it this month That's on cool. our almost ready YouTube channel. That's good. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's exciting. Uh, have you seen the first cut of it yet? I have, yes. Are you pleased with it? Uh, yes. Um, yeah. You can't include everything, and uh, I discovered that that uh, he had hours of, of uh, footage, and to get into two minutes, yeah. he decided it was about to be, you know, not everything was included. But we feel like we have a starting point, and we can move on because we, we got all the people, so we we're able to uh, use that as other things. But it's hard because mm -hmm. the first time we looked at it, oh well, we didn't get this. And this like that or it wasn't even shot. So it deciding that is, is difficult. But only for an outsider, somebody who wants to visit the town, they don't know the things that we left out. Exactly. That's exactly right. Um, yeah, one of the smartest things you can do, whether it's yourself or if you hire somebody, is to capture all the footage you can mm -hmm. while you while you're there. Um, if you've got somebody on site and you're producing something, I mean, just go ahead and get the things you can get, it, even if you're not sure that you'll use it right away, you may use it later. So we'll, what we've found a lot of times is we'll capture a lot of stuff, we'll produce a two minute video, one minute, three minute video, and we have a lot of extra stuff left over. Um, and so that can be used to create 20 second videos, 30 second videos, you maximize that stuff that you get. That's good. Um, now I understand wanting to get everything in too, because as a matter of fact, Holston Home, um, when we I sent them the first draft, the first cut of the video, which I was just like in love with. I was like, oh, here we go. They're going to just flip out. It's going to be amazing. And they loved it. They loved it a lot. But then there were things that weren't in it. And then he was like, oh, we need to get so-and-so in there. And I'm like, so-and-so, nobody knows who so-and-so is that's, that from the outside. Yeah, but we know who they are. And they need to be like, you don't. So we compromised a little bit. And so I said, all right, we'll, we'll add some stuff in that I felt detracted from the story a little bit. But to kind of make sure that they felt like we were doing what they wanted them to do. Um, and, and, but we still didn't lose the story completely. So we kind of met in the middle there. So yeah, don't, don't try to put everything in the world in there because it will get lost. And the people who are watching your video, if they don't know much about you anyways, I mean, less is more still. Just, it's the emotional side. Just get in with the emotional side. That, the video we did, um, now I'm going to have to send it to you probably now that I've talked so much about it. Um, but it told nothing about what Holstein does. <laughs> I mean, nothing at all. Um, all it did was make people go, you know, like that and tear up a little bit and say, oh my gosh. And then when they're in a presentation, they just play that and then someone walks up afterwards and says, this is why we do what we do. And this is how you can help us. Holstein, we do this, 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 and this, and we want more kids like this coming out of our system. Done. You know, and that's, that's how it went. So less is definitely more. What, you raised your hand in the back. Did you guys do a little bit of video? Um, I forgot your name. I'm sorry. Regina. Regina. Thank you. Um, what are your names? <laughs> 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 uh, I'm just going to go. I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the company that I work for did provides a great deal of marketing tools and uh, training for We all do. Yeah, so you're doing a lot of some things where you're on camera, talking, giving information. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. We're at my clinic. We're planning a video. We haven't started yet, but we've been formulating the idea for one. 
because we give instructions for beforehand before they bring the animals in, and especially for take home instructions. Mm -hmm. So these aren't necessarily what our original uh, vision was not marking, it's more mm -hmm. to show people who are already there, yeah. uh, but to cut down on some of our our office work, I guess. Yeah. And so we already have um, like a local news anchor who's a great supporter of us. She's going to do the video. Okay. But, you know, we're, everything else we have nothing. We have our script, we have her, and that's it. Right. But I also envision using that on a YouTube channel, on our mm -hmm. Facebook page, for people just to know what to expect yeah. if they do make an appointment also. So, yeah. you know, other than that, we'll do this. Well, yeah. Using the video in as many multiple ways as you can is, is beneficial for sure. Any other thoughts? Um, well, so let's get into kind of you, you doing it and what what you can do and how you can do it. So, I, I just didn't want to list. There's, there's a lot you can do. So I just list out a couple things as to how maybe to, to get started. So. Um, you'd be surprised at what you can do with your cell phone. Has anybody used your cell phone for videos before? Yeah. I mean, keep doing that. That is good. Always, always, always hold it this way. Don't, don't do it this way. Um, that's portrait. Always do landscape. Um, because it just, it, you know, life is a little, little better. Um, so always do it landscape. Um, you know, the, the audio is not that bad when you use your phone, honestly, and it depends on where you are. If you're in a kind of cold, cave-like room, it may not be very good, but if you're um, in a decent place, audio is not that bad either. So, I've seen, there are people uh, making uh, movies with cell phones. I mean, um, there's adapters you can get and things if you wanted to get an extra a lens to put on there that makes it look even better. There are some mic adapters you can get to add to your cell phone. There's a lot you can do with the phone. Uh, so use the cell phone. Another option would be to buy an inexpensive camera and maybe a little microphone to go on top. Um, does anybody own cameras um, in their business? Like a video camera? You do, what do you have? Yeah. Oh, a still camera? Okay. Um, there are, so we use, uh, they're called DSLRs, so they're photo and video uh, cameras uh, in one. Um, those are great. Those really should be used for somebody that knows their way around a camera decently. Uh, you can learn pretty well. Um, another good option, though, is you, there are Canon and, and Sony uh, candy cams that can be bought if you've got this. You can, you can do that. Um, those could be good for... Uh, for the talking head type videos. I mean, for things that you don't need a lot of creativity, but you just need to get something out, you can certainly use that and have it set up Use a tripod, you know, buy a $35 tripod and set it up um, and just, just to get started. Um, but your phone, I think, will do the job most of the time and, the, and it's just getting better and better with every new phone that comes out. Um, if you want to do any editing, uh, you've got Windows Movie Maker, I think, comes on most Mac or um, Windows machines, I think, and then iMovie comes on every Mac machine. So um, you can you can learn that. It looks when you open it, you're going to get. I mean, if you've never opened it, when you open it, you're going to go. Oh my God. So you have to just sort through it a little bit. You can learn it. I mean, it's not it's not too terribly bad. If you're willing to spend half a day or so watching some tutorials, getting in there, you could probably do the basic stuff. It's, it's not not too bad. Um, and then you can use music if you want to royalty free music. You can use Google Royalty Free Music and you'll get a ton of stuff. Um, most of those places have what's called a Creative Commons license. And so if people are making music and they're saying that they're willing to let other people use it um, just as a Creative Commons kind of community um, for creative people to, to use music. So you can do that. Usually they want credit at the end of it or something. You can just put them on credit at the end. No big deal. Um, so I want to show you a quick example and then let's keep talking about how how you can do it, because I really want you to walk away feeling like I can do this. There's things I can do to start making videos without having to go hire a company and spend a lot of money. Um, so I've got a friend named Colin Johnson. Does anybody know Colin Johnson by chance? He's a real estate agent with Keller Williams. He lives in Johnson City. And so he started doing this thing. Um, he's a very successful realtor. 
but he's a real people guy. He's really invested in his community and his church. And so he started this thing called Fired Up Friday. So every Friday, just on his own personal Facebook page, he has somebody hold his phone up and film him. And he's at a different location around town. He'll be at Barberitos, and he's like, hey, it's Friday, I'm fired up, woo! And he gets all excited, he's like, I'm at Barberitos, you got to come down here and check out their, whatever, their burritos and tacos, and he's, uh, this weekend, we're going to play some golf, and we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and he just gets people fired up. Like, it's just, it's the weekend, and everybody's like, just watching this stuff, I mean, and they love it. It's 30 seconds long, maybe a minute long at the most, um, does it with his phone, and... He just puts it out there every Friday. People look forward to this Fired Up Friday. With, where is Colin this week? He's, you know, somewhere. And so I'll show you, here's a quick example of him doing that. This was at um, the Well, is a college ministry in, in, uh, at ETSU, and they had a golf tournament. I don't think he was there, so. Hey, everybody, Colin Johnson. I'm here at the Elizabethan Golf Course. We're playing golf for the Well Classic today. Jake, keep up. The Wells is a non-denominational student ministry at ETSU. Our mission is to see students come to know Christ, to see believers grow in their walk of faith, and send them out for our graduation, quit and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're fired up about the well. You guys fired up about the well? Yeah! All right, everybody. Get fired up. The weekend Tennessee is going to be Georgia like That's it. I mean, that's all you're doing. Um, you got to just look away from the Tennessee Georgia comment. That was, um, so he doesn't say anything about himself during his videos ever. He never s says, "I'm a real estate agent. Call me for your to your next home." Blah 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 blah. He is always highlighting somebody else and what they do. Um, sometimes it's nonprofit. Sometimes it's not. It, it's just whoever and whatever. One day he was. On Friday, he was at Kroger buying mums because it's time to plant mums. And he was just like, look, go, go to Kroger and buy some mums. I mean, it's just, it's just whatever. Um, and he does a really great job of it. He, you know, he's not Mr. Personality necessarily on camera. He does a great job, though. Uh, it's an easy thing for him to do. Now, people are talking about this that he doesn't even know. We're like, have you seen this guy? Fire that funny. He's just great. And so he is, what he's doing is he's adding value to people. Number one, he's adding value to the well because they're getting this exposure. Um, online so they're great of course but he's this is a very selfless video even though it is him he's gonna he, he benefits from this um, uh, clearly because people think i'll call him right he's cool look what he's doing uh, when you think of a realtor you might think of him just because you see him out there all the time so he is regularly using video and he's doing it every friday um he posts it and uh it's been a huge hit for him um so does he have his phone on a tripod there you know, I, don't, I think somebody else was holding it. I don't think it was that steady. Hey, everybody, no. Colin Johnson, I'm here. Yeah, no, he was, um, yeah, no, he was, uh, somebody was holding it. He just had somebody hold it. Usually it's one of his kids or his wife or somebody. Um, so that's, he has a shot with the cell phone, pretty good quality. The audio sounded decent. Um, not too bad, not too bad. Now, Josh, what do you think about GoPro uh, video or cameras? Yeah, I think GoPros um, are great. Uh, you know, it, if you have a newer model GoPro, it's great because you can see the back of the screen. You can see on the back what you're watching. Some of the older models you can't see. You just have to hold it up and just hope that you're shooting something. Um, the only thing about GoPro, it's got a bit of a fisheye lens to it. So it's going to be really wide, um, which is okay. Uh, it is good for... Um, let me see. We're, we're, at High Road, we're currently doing a video for NETA, which is the Northeast Tennessee Tourism Association. And so, and it's all shot on the GoPro. And so, um, one guy that we were doing um, outdoor adventure. And so, we had um, one of our team members take a GoPro, and he was going zip lining, he was going kayaking, he was doing rock climbing, all of this stuff around the region to showcase what you can do. And it was all just shot with a GoPro. He didn't have to have any cinematic capabilities at all, except, you know, our video guy said, okay, turn it on here, and then just put it on here and just go. And so it is pretty easy to capture that stuff. Um, I'm currently doing the next series where I'm taking my family. We're going to all the family-friendly areas um, 
in, in the region, hands-on museum and parks and whatnot. And so it's all from the perspective, of, like first-person perspective. And so there is no like star of the video, nobody's talking in the video, there's just music behind it, it looks really, really good. Um, and it just shows like me, like you'll see, miss my hands with my kids and we're hands-on doing something. And then we're at the park and you see a fish in a stroller and you see lots of different things. So it's really neat to create um, some unique videos like that. So first person perspective videos are cool with, with GoPros. Um, they, I mean, it would be my first choice for somebody if you were saying, hey, I want to make a video, we'll show you. I wouldn't say use GoPro, um, unless you have one and you can find a way to use it. But I would say go, go to your phone first because um, it's a flat image just not warped at all with the, with the fish islands um, but you can put GoPros and do things with GoPros you can't do with anything else um, you can get a little suction cup thing and stick it on the side of something of your car and drive and just see what you get and there's a lot of cool things you can do with it um, I've done that before so <laughs> um, up in Road Mountain it was pretty cool um, yeah, so I got a lot I can say about how to make your own videos, but I want to hear from you guys a little bit about what, I mean, what do you want me to tell you about how to make a video on your own? Like if you said, I need, I need to know how to make a video, but you know, where, where, where do I start and what do I do? Is that, is that where you are or, or just somebody talk to me, tell me what, what you need? I need to know how to edit. You know, you just, yeah. Okay, um, download the iMovie app. Okay. Yeah, you iMovie for iPhone. Yeah, and you can. I mean, you see other people do really creative things. And yeah. Then, and, I mean, I know I have some very creative things. Or you get to edit miles and fly yourself. You know, you go, okay, that was cool. That was stupid. But when we go from here, we'll just skip, yeah. go from A to D and skip the middle. Yeah. Okay. There are apps that you can use with your cell phone footage. You need to just put the footage into your into that app and just edit. Um, it's uh, you know take a little bit of practice, but they make it pretty pretty easy uh, to do. It's not it's not too hard. Um, but yeah, that's a great thing to do <coughs> you, yeah, if you're shooting and there's like a bunch of just nothing. You're like, well, I don't want to show all that. I just want to show the main part. Yeah, you can just kind of clip. You can't do any high power editing, but you can just clip out that piece, clip out that piece, and then it just bumps it all together. You see it for these videos. Yeah. That's how. Um, of course, you know you can do it in your computer as well. But the iPhone, I mean, it, it is absolutely possible to shoot and edit and and produce a video simply on your phone. I'm not familiar with Samsungs and, and non Apple phones, uh, so I can't tell you much there. But if you have an iPhone, um, you can get the iMovie app, and it will be pretty cool. So I would suggest going and getting it, and just I think it's free. Just download it and just take some video, put it in there, and just kind of mess around with it a little bit. If there's other more tech-savvy people around you that maybe can help you, just say, "Hey, can you help me with this?" Um, and you'll be surprised at what you can what you can do there. And I will say that on iMovie, I only can do it. You can also add music, music the background, yeah. or if it's something that you want to um, narrate, you can actually fix the video and then start narrating it. Uh, put your voice behind it. What's that? They did? Okay. It's very similar. Okay. Have you found the Apple one to be pretty easy? Yeah. I mean, you know, you're not gonna not gonna be uh, George Lucas or anything, but you are gonna be able to do some easy things there. Um, so I'm gonna. Skip ahead a couple things to what I wanted to show you here. So some some, some ideas um, of what you should be producing uh, testimonials from clients. Now, that's not an amazing uh, emotional story. It might be. I don't know. Depends on what you do. But I mean, um, if you've got 
a client or a customer or anybody that's affected or just involved in what you do at all, and you're with them, hey, would you mind if I just videoed you for 30 seconds just telling, you know, how what we do has impacted you and, and what your experience has been like with us? Most people will say yes. And there's a few who will be like, oh my gosh, no, I can't, I can't do that. But most people will say yes. And those go a long way. Testimonials from others. Other people telling uh, people how great you are is a lot better than you telling people how great you are. And so there's no better way to get some marketing than getting other people to talk about you. Um, and in the process, you might say, hey, while you're at it, would you mind giving me a five-star review on Facebook? Uh, you know, have them do a couple, a couple things. So use your, your, your people. That, that's a big, big part of it for me, I think, is use your people. Um, I'll, I'm going to recommend some, some books and authors and different people to you in a minute. But one guy, his name is Seth Godin. Have you ever heard of Seth Godin? He's a marketing expert. And um, he talks about viral marketing, and I'm a huge fan of his. And he says you need to create sneezers. Um, and so just like when if you have uh, sickness and you sneeze, Everybody in your area is now going to be infected with what you've got. In the same way, whatever product service you have, those people who <coughs> believe in what you do, and who believe uh, in, in your service or product, and who are fans of yours, get them to do your marketing for you. Make them your sneezers so that they post on their Facebook and they share with their friends. Um, we are literally getting back. To, we have almost come full circle in this whole marketing world. We are almost back to word of mouth marketing is about the best thing that you can do. Um, you can do big ads and things, but honest to goodness, we are back. It is viral marketing. It is you need people who believe in what you do telling others about you. That's the number one thing that you need in your marketing right now. And so by having short, I said 15-second videos, 30 seconds, whatever you can do, um, testimonials from people. The 15-second video is the most watched video on Facebook right now. Um, People are watching 30 seconds in a minute, and then half, but the most watched video is 15 seconds. Um, what can I do in 15 seconds? Well, you, you can do a lot. I mean, honestly, you can, you can um, if you're having an event, you could simply put it up and say, hey guys, we're having an event tonight from 7 to 9. Come down here, we're going to have this, this, and this. We're excited. See you there. Whatever. That may be a bad example, but, but you can do a lot in 15 seconds. Um, people are more likely to watch. Um, 10 to 20, 15 second videos than they are watching one three minute video. Uh, funny videos. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of times there's ads connected to Lauren Woods. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of, uh, and we do some of that, however, we do some of those videos for people, the videos that, the ads that come up before you watch a YouTube video, I hate those ads. I never watch them, I skip them every single time that I can. And if it doesn't allow me to skip it, I just, for the sake of being stubborn, I don't. I just, I'm, like, I'm not. I'm not watching. Um, and so, unless it's cute puppies and horses for Budweiser, but uh, overall, yeah, I skip that absolutely. So, you could do the, the they call pre-roll ads, and we do those for people. I mean, we only do them because they ask for them. I, I don't recommend doing those. Nobody watches them. Um, How-to videos. I think this is this is big. Um, you could benefit from some stuff like that. I mean, I mean, I would say take what you do and translate it into some other um, ways that, that benefit people. So maybe not everybody is interested in, in Kung Fu. Um, but you might get them interested in Kung Fu if you are now doing a 30 second video about how to do some type of physical exercise or some type of physical move. Hey, here's 30 seconds I want to tell you about just a quick uh, safety move you can do. If you ever have somebody approach you from behind and do this, you can do whatever move. You do show it in 30 seconds, put it on Facebook, and people will like that. People will, will go for that. Um, add value to people. Add value. To, give them things that are going to keep them coming back. Um, we are very me-centered, and we want people to, to give us stuff. So do things like that. And you can do it on your, on your phone. Again, post it, boom, you're done. Um, about those videos, uh, obviously, I think people want to know the faces behind the company. They want to know who they're dealing with. Uh, not just a company. So anything you can do to talk about who you are. Uh, and then I say process videos. Um, what I mean by that is uh, I did a video a couple years ago for um, uh, a company that produces uh, pimento peppers and bell peppers, red peppers, roasted red peppers. 
Um, the company is Moody Dunbar. Uh, they're in Johnson City, by the way, like the, the, the largest production, uh, pepper production company in the, in the country, uh, one of the largest. And uh, they do all the jarred stuff, so pimentos, roasted red peppers, all that. Um, and so we went to um, they have a, a plant in North Carolina and a plant in California. We went to both, both, both plants, a video, a whole bunch of stuff. And, man, I could have made a 30-minute, hour-long documentary about how they get these peppers out of the field. We were droning, you know, these big machines, getting all these peppers out. It was really cool. We were in the plant, which was blowing my mind, and, and, it, and it smelled like peppers. It smells pretty good, actually. And, and we were just, it was an amazing process. But nobody's going to watch an hour long. Me and my, some Netflix documentary on uh, how peppers are made, um, how jarred peppers are made. But, but we, I turned it into a one-minute video. It was one minute. I don't, know, I don't know how I did it. And, and, and there was no talking at all. Again, it was just some music. And it was like it took you through the process of, here's a bunch of guys. Um, we did, uh, they do sweet potatoes also. So they're picking up sweet potatoes, throwing them here. Then it shows them being dumped into a, uh, from a truck into the big thing. They pick it up and load it into here. And then here they come. They're being sliced up in this slicer thing. And then it go through the, the conveyor belt. And the people are sorting through different bad ones and good ones. And, and they're being, I mean, it was amazing. And then next thing you know, you know, here's a jar of sweet potatoes on the counter. And you're like, oh, wow. Well, so that's how my jar of sweet potatoes get from the field to uh, my table in one minute. And so that was interesting to people. Um, so that process, people want to know the, the process behind what you do sometimes. Give them a little peek behind the curtain. That's always interesting to people. Um, and you all have opportunities to do that, I'm sure, in what you do. And so the... What I, would, what I would say is, in everything you do, I mean, literally, everything you do, think, how can I turn this into a video? Um, that's how I operate. It's a, it's a curse, by gosh, because I just can't even get through a day without imagining how I would shoot this um, or, or produce this. But in everything you do, think, how can I turn this into a video? Now, I'm skipping around on you. If you're following back there, I'm skipping around a little bit. Um, but let's go back to um, this part. So, versus... Uh, you doing it yourself versus hiring a professional. Um, you hire a professional for right here. If you need a high quality production and you need to make a splash, you really need to make a dent in your marketing for real, and you need to be really good. And you need to hire somebody. Um, like what you're doing, you need that. You need to hire somebody for that. That's exactly right. Um, for a video that has a long shelf life, a lot of videos that you guys can create on your own are things to be used in the moment on social media your website, but if you want something that's going to have a long shelf life, which is probably what, hopefully what you'll have, um, that you'll use in multiple ways um, across multiple platforms, um, that is kind of your go-to. Um, so tell me what you did. Watch this video. And then you've got it. You want to keep that for a long time. That you're going to want a, a, a good production. Um, and if you need to tell a dynamic story. Um, I, I believe that storytelling is, is everything, and I love it. I'm a storyteller at heart. And here's, here's my belief about storytelling. So keep this in mind as, as you're doing things. Um, I hate to use this, use this as, an, as an example because it's relevant. I, I will. So the, um, the Las Vegas shooting. Um, so there is, you, I mean, we could, we could say if, someone, if, if, a, if a journalist or somebody is going to tell a story about what has happened here, they could say, I hear the gunman and he opened fire and he shot and and these people were, these people were, um, you know, nurses and teachers, and they were real, real life people. And you know, some of them they've gone back home with with injuries. And some of them have died and lost loved ones. Oh man, that's, that's that is tough. That is really, really tough. We all know that's heavy. It's very tough. But if I take one person from all those thousands and pull them out and tell their story of what happened to them the night of the shooting, you sit them down. They say, oh, okay, I, I was there. And my girlfriend was with me, and you know we were listening to the concert. And we heard shots ring out, and she hit the ground, and she was shot in the arm. And I dove on top of her. I mean, you hear an individual story as way more impactful than um, numbers. And so, in your case, you could say, well, you know, this year we um, had you know 150 pets adopted. But is that what you just say? Spade. Spade. Sorry. Pets, all the same uh, to me. <laughs> let's just uh, 
let's let's say you did adoption, okay? Just because okay. that's my story was going now. Okay. <laughs> so let's say you you uh, the, the animal shelter and you do you do adoptions. All right, so the, you could say this year we did 150 adoptions because of your um, contributions, because of your support to your local shelter, we were able to adopt 150 pets. Wow, that's great! Congratulations. Or you could take the one story of this puppy, you know, named Bobby the puppy. It's a stupid name. <laughs> Who would name my Bobby? Uh, we'll just say uh, Rover. All right, Rover. <laughs> it's a Rover who's got you know he's only he's got three legs and one legs up here, and so he hobbles around and. He's really cute. Nobody would adopt him. And this little girl came in. She's like, oh, I want that puppy. And you tell this story of this. And next thing you know, you've got grown men watching this. And they're like, oh, my God. <laughs> That's so touching. I'm sorry. No, this. So you take one story and you tell it awesome rather than having a bunch of potential stories or numbers. Does that make sense? Everybody got that? Okay. Um, so here's an example of a good production that we did. Um, how am I doing on time? Are you guys done with me yet? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to you out. I'm almost done. Uh, I want to show you another video. This uh, we did at High Road for the Justice City um, Convention and Visitors Bureau. So each year, not every year, but most most years, they go to a conference, a softball conference, and they pitch to the American Softball Association, USA Softball, these big softball organizations that we want to have your big tournament here in our place. And so there's cities all over the country doing this. Are you guys part of that? Are you part of that? No? Okay. Um, and so we, uh, they wanted to do a video. So their process up there is they go and they kind of shake hands and talk with people and try to do the, the thing to get the, the judges who were going to pick where this big softball tournament was going to go because it's a huge economic boost where because parents and family, they all come, it's thousands of people descend upon this town, this city, and it's, it's a big deal. Um, and so the video piece they asked us to do, and um, it's a small piece of it because most of that is done through the handshaking and the meetings and all that kind of stuff. And by the time you get to the video, it's really probably, this decision's probably already made, but they just wanted to kind of make a splash and leave this video as a final, like, you know, boom. Don't forget about us. Consider us. Um, uh, they did not win, so so our video sucked and it was terrible. But no, it was a great video. They they did not win in the end because uh, there's another town, I think Spartanburg, that got that has an amazing facility, and they were just beat out simply because of facilities. But they did say that they had probably had the best presentation and by far the best video that was there. So that made me feel good. But um, again. Keep in mind when they come to us and say, we want softball teams to come here, we want parents to come here, we, we want this to be a great experience for them, we want them to spend money here in our city. Um, there's a thousand ways to do this. There's a thousand ways. You can get somebody talking on the screen, let me tell you about Johnson City, it's a great place. All right, so we took a different route. Hopefully it, I don't think it's good.
so the goal there was to try to get them interested in coming, not just because we have great softball, but because we have great places to eat and your family's going to have a great time and so on and so forth. Um, so that's an example of, of uh, you know, more of a full-scale production. Josh, that video that you had in there of, of just a racetrack, yes. did you have to get permission? Yes, we did. We did. Well, cause, yeah, because it, it, it is Johnson City, but we, you know, we wanted to promote the whole region, you know, so we had some shots of Bristol Rhythm Roots in there, we had, um, yeah. Softball players. What's that? Abby and softball players. Ab yeah, that was the Abby and group. You know those girls yes, back then? Yeah. yeah. Well, the two sisters, they were kind of our... The Tollers, yeah. The Tollers, yeah, yeah. Uh, they were kind of our, our, our family that, that we, we used there. And, uh, yeah, we staged all that. The game was not a real game, obviously. We staged it all. Um, it was a pretty big production. And, and so they have been able to use that, not just for the softball pitch, but for a lot of other things as well. Um, all right, so a couple more things. Um, somebody mentioned live video. I'll just give you that really quick. Good time to use live video, Facebook Live. You, there's Facebook Live and there's Periscope, right? Um, Periscope is sort of it's floundering a little bit. Periscope is really for Twitter. Um, uh, so I would focus on Facebook Live. That's your, that's your main thing. Um, do you build up Twitter followers and you have that there? Periscope is a great tool to use, great app to use. Um, use live video for special events. Um, Showing at the event, here we are, we're doing this, look how cool it is, those types of things. Make people wish they were there. Uh, announcements, just simply um, I have a friend who he moves every three months. His wife is a traveling nurse and he's an entrepreneur, he moves every three months. And every three months he does a Facebook Live video of him announcing, guess where we're moving next. And, like, and I have to watch because I'm just like, oh God. Okay, I'll watch it, I'll watch it because he's making an announcement, it's pretty cool. So any kind of announcement that could be a 15 seconds long, 30 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever, um, announcements of things that are coming up. Um, special guests, if you have a special somebody coming to, to the gym or if you got special people doing uh, something with you, um, you can say, hey, I'm here uh, and I've got someone with me today. They're gonna talk to you a little bit about something. Quick, quick, quick and done. Using, using other people. Uh, if anything kind of a launch, launching something, a new service, a new product, uh, um, anything at all, um, live, live stream it. Uh, tours, tours of your office, tours of your studio, tours of whatever. Um, just take people through in one minute. Hey, we want to show you guys what we did here. We got this, we got that. Um, that could be pretty neat. Um, and then to do just a vlog or, or a story of some kind. Uh, one example of this is there's a, a Christian radio station that we're uh, working with, you may know 88.3 WCQR, they're our local Christian station in North Tennessee, South, South, South Virginia. Well, they're owned by a larger company uh, who has like five stations. And so for that company, we have done some things in which they are, their uh, DJs are on camera for about a minute and saying, hey, we just want to tell you, we got this letter from a listener. This lady was on the brink of suicide and she turned on her radio, just happened to hear this song, and it led her to pull her car off the side of the road and like not go through with this and call so much for help. I mean, the amazing stories. I mean, so if you have just a story, any kind of story at all that, that has any kind of impact, it doesn't have to be so drastic as that, just anything that is just worth telling. You'd be surprised at what is actually worth telling. Do it. Just hold the phone up and just say, hey, I just want to tell you this real quick. This is really cool. 30 seconds. Um, so those are some, some examples of how to use and when to use live video. Any other questions about live video? What do we have to this with this? that whole live video thing is that like my mindset of sort of a perfectionist way of thinking mm -hmm. needs to like loosen up a little bit. Like the other day Rebecca Pepin came and um, donated yeah. to the clinic and I took her picture, handed the check over and I set the iPad on my desk and I thought well, here in a minute I'm going to edit that picture and post it on a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting at the computer and a notification pops up and she has already posted her picture. She's in our cat room. She walked from the lobby to the mm. cat room. She's posted that picture and she's doing a live video from her cat room. And I still have this on my to-do list. And I'm, right. you know, so I'm thinking how I can do live videos without wanting to, you know, critique them down to being perfect. Right. Can I address that? Yeah. That's exactly what I'm going through. Is I had an idea that I wanted to share. It was, in my opinion, a very good idea. I waited three weeks. Three weeks because hair didn't look good. I'm getting old. Two things. Number 
one, maybe five seconds. Well, you, have, you have a great idea, you have five seconds to do it. Just do it. Just do it. Because you know what, today sitting here in this group room, I will real sure what my hair looks like, might be crazy. Y'all see that? Not real sure what my baggy eyes look like. I got, I got this dark thing from my grandmother. It's not going away. Even my dad's it was looking through three days drunk on there. I'm like, Maybe not. Y'all went through these fears of do I look okay? Am I all that? Did I say all that? Did I say something stupid? One time I posted a video or I did a video and turned it off and shut it down because this is lame to be speaking naked truth. When I speak, my lower teeth show. And I never noticed that. But I, the whole time I was going, you're just shaking her teeth. <laughs> and you guys laugh, that's how stupid it is. But for me, it's a huge, real fear of criticizing. So yeah. put your fear aside because guess what? We like you, Robert. You are the way you look. Here's whatever. Your bottom's big. Whatever. This is what I look like. This is the way I sound. And this is the way I talk. So put it out there because I had a great idea. And now I just learned this yesterday. This is my this is my rule. That's why I like even telling you this, because usually I cry, I'm gonna cry. Give it five seconds. It's a great idea to do it. But I kept it. I agree hundred percent. Give it five seconds. Just do it. You wanna say something about that? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just wondering too if it depends on what you're you're trying to market in your audience. I mean if you're marketing your hair salon, if you're marketing the makeup stuff, I'm gonna care what you look like. Mm -hmm, if sure. you're a mom who's trying to pack at five in the morning and get three kids on the road and you don't know my world and you're not marketing to me. You have no value. So she's just telling me being real. Well, but yeah, real I mean, person. Really, that's not because real. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to market to you one on one. Marketing is sharing what you believe in. If I go to a new restaurant and I would love it, what am I going to say tomorrow? And I'm not going to go, what's it look like? Guess what? Let me tell you this, this restaurant. I'm just going to go, should I have that? I know you're going to edit it. You're just going to say it. Well, there's, uh, there's also, like, the, the element of what else is in the media, what else you see. Like, everything that I do, I get approved mm -hmm. before I post it at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, pictures or whatever. And, you know, if I video um, the mat, the recovery mat, and it's got a cat with a tube in its throat, and the well, owner yeah. sees that cat on my video, <laughs> And, and causing, and it's like, what, why is my cat laying there looking like it's dead? Yeah. You know, like we just have a rule. We don't, we don't post pictures of cats with yeah. in their throat because they look like they're dead and they've got tooth coming out of their throat, you know? Yeah. Um, so, I like to see that myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's a... element of discretion. I mean, you know, yeah. I'll do videos or whatever, but, you know, I'll do shows like that. I got it all together. Yeah, that's right. And I think it also is the media that you're going to be putting in But what, and what's interesting about that? People, people like that. People want that because it makes it makes you. Everything doesn't need to be polished all the time because that's not that's not real life. And so people like that. And I think that is what a lot of researchers are discovering with all of this is that people like the more unpolished, just raw video. And so uh, we do video work for for the Speedway, for Summer Speedway, and you know we're going around outside the track interviewing fans, NASCAR fans, and asking them. Um, why they keep coming back to Bristol? What do they love about the racetrack here? What do they love about the atmosphere here? And we can take that and produce a really great piece. But all they want, and, and I'm behind them on this, is they want 15 second, 30 second clips raw of somebody just saying, "Man, I love coming to Bristol because you know the atmosphere is great. It's like coming back home every time I come here. I love seeing so and so wreck somebody, and, and, and people are so friendly here. It's the best best track I've ever been to. Done." That's it. That's all they want. They don't need it to be polished, and then they're not polished. Now we're shooting with real cameras most of the time, not, not phones. But um, that, there's no music behind it. There's no real editing done to it. It's just a raw clip. And so, if the big companies are putting out raw clips of stuff, then there's something, something to be said for that. And I think, yeah. And I, and I watched people that put out the, the, the live videos. And you know, every couple of days or once a week, they do an update. 
or whatever, and they're they're live or they're just doing a video. It it it, it works. I mean, you know, um, people like the unpolished look. So I think um, again, it's like we're coming full circle again from big production videos, things you got to do back down to just simple cell phone videos. Um, and because a big part of that, and I'm gonna, well, I'll tell you that in a minute. Go ahead. so far is that yeah the 15 second video leans towards the younger audience um, and the minute long or so videos lean to a little bit of an older audience but what we've seen is that everybody watches the 15 second video you know less young people watch the minute to two minute long videos and so really more or less that your, your folks that are my age and older the 30s 40s 50s they're they're watching both most like they'll watch the 15 second but they'll also watch the longer one a lot of times um, well, even if it's longer, like the first 15 seconds, you've got to really capture them. Too, yeah, you've got to capture attention in the first 15 seconds. Right? Even if it is longer, just to get their attention mm -hmm. in the first, so they keep watching. Yeah. Most people are scrolling. Yeah, so <laughs> when I see a video that is two minutes, I'm going to keep on scrolling. Mm -hmm. I might, I only have a few seconds mm -hmm. to stop at that time. That's what I said. Yeah. If it catches mine in the first few seconds, you know, I might want to stop and so a way to some maybe test it, let's say you make, let's say you produce a nice two minute long video that you may put on your website about what you do, um, use it on your website, put that video also on Facebook and, and YouTube and other outlets, and then take that two minute video and whittle it down into several 15, 20, 30 second videos, put those out also, and you can kind of see which ones are doing better based you know, for your audience, so you'll know, you know, which one they like, you know, they like better. And the fastest growing audience on Facebook is women 50 and over. Um, you know, for your, your, for your social breakdown, it just everybody's on every social network to some extent, but Snapchat is millennials and high schoolers, Instagram is millennials, uh, Facebook is adults, uh, Twitter is young professionals. So that's, that's the basic breakdown of your audience. Um, let me give this one last piece and then we will call today and you can ask me some more questions at the end. So this is my storytelling arc, uh, story arc, PAR, easy to remember, just PAR, um, problem, action, resolution. That, that's what you want and what you, what you put out there um, a lot of times. Now not everything is going to fit into that, obviously, especially if it's a 15 second, 30 second video necessarily, but um, um, keep that in mind whenever you're creating content is what problem or issue are you solving for me? Um, and two, um, how, how are you doing it? And then three, what's my end result as, as a result of that action that I'm taking? Um, so, um, again, I'll come back to you. I mean, this, this, this is off the cuff, so bear with me. But, I mean, uh, what's the problem? You know, it's not really a, a problem necessarily, but you could, you could play the, um, the self-defense side of things, right? And say, well, the problem is, is that um, X number of people out of X number of people are will experience an assault or experience whatever, and um, that's the problem that's going on. Our action is we, we bring you in and we do X, Y, Z and teach you this, and the resolution as a result is you're better know how to, to defend yourself. So if you encounter that situation, you now know what to do. You could even probably tell you, like, there's a lot of benefits to martial arts that people don't really think about. Mm -hmm. You know, that a lot of local parents bring children in for great discipline, yes. more confidence, self-respect. So some of those character traits can be kind of the problem. It's not, not a problem, but the game, you know, my problem is how do I increase self-esteem? Mm -hmm. How do I increase exactly. discipline? So what I would do is I would list out all those things that martial arts does, the self-esteem, confidence, the things. I would make a video for each one. I'd get a parent who says, I bring my kid out here because um, I've seen that in the last six months his confidence has gone up tremendously and, so that, and that's it. 
then have somebody talk about something else. I mean, literally, find everywhere you can to, to make a video, break it down into to a number of different options there. Uh, does that make sense, though, the, the car story arc? Or it's a simple way to like, remember. that example, like you had like a video of a kid throwing stuff and cussing his parents, and then <laughs> yes. he was like, yes. yes. Like, yeah. food, and then him putting dishes away at the end and saying, thank you, Mommy. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Catch yeah. their attention yeah. in the first yeah. first yeah. few seconds. That's, that's what you got to do. Does it work both ways? That would be an example of you know the you do a testimonial, yeah. but just the parent talking about it's like yeah. oh this is you know when we came here I was looking for this or like you said put it in more of the story format. Yeah. And do it more that way. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Um, here at the very end, first steps for you. If just I don't know where you are in the journey. I've heard. Some of you are different places. Uh, start a YouTube channel ASAP. Um, and if you need help doing that, you know, ask somebody you may know. Feel free to email me. I'd be happy just to, to show you how to do that. Um, upload videos as often as possible. I said every week. That may not be possible for you early on, but at least every month. Start loading that channel with videos, as many as you can. Uh, don't just upload crap, but I mean upload things that are, that are, are worthy, but fill that channel up. Uh, you start with the one good video that you guys are going to have, and then start creating more from there. Um, that helps with your findability, again, on Google. Add value to people, tell a story, and uh, then share your videos on social media. Uh, there's a few folks that are worth following. Um, I don't say her name right. I think it's Elise. Elise whatever. Um, Straycan, maybe. I don't know. Strucken. Um, she is a, uh, she does cupcakes and decorations and uh, pastries, things like that, and she has used video amazingly. So look on Facebook. She does Facebook videos all the time, and she didn't know how to do this early on. She just started figuring it out. She started doing Facebook videos, and now she's pretty big, and she's got hundreds of thousands of followers and people that subscribe to her, and it's a big deal. It's completely renovated. Uh, revolutionize her business. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk, does anyone know who Gary Vaynerchuk is? He's a um, he's a CEO of, of uh, uh, a media company. I forgot the name of it, um, but uh, he's a brilliant mind. He doesn't talk just about video. Or, he talks a lot about marketing. He talks a lot about innovation. He's really sharp, and what he does is he regularly puts out. 30 second to a minute long videos, and they will just be him riding in a car, and a guy with him will just turn on turn on the phone or a camera, or whatever, and just record him just, I say ranting, but just um, you know reeling about about some topic, and it's and it's always usually it's really intriguing and really interesting. He's a really great personality. He uses the F word a lot, so if that bothers you, don't 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 watch him. But um, he I don't know why, but it's just it's who he is. Uh, he's, but he's brilliant. Uh, Seth Godin, um, there's a book um, by him, that, there's several books by him that you might want to read. Um, I I had it with you. Uh, there's one called, um, I do, uh, All Marketers Are Liars, uh, would consider that one. He crosses out liars and says, all marketers tell stories. And so I'm a big fan of that. If you haven't read that, pick that up. I got this for like eight bucks on Amazon. It's, Eight or nine bucks. So, all marketers are liars. Um, that's good. Uh, he has another book called uh, Purple Cow, worth reading. Uh, I would check that out. Um, Casey Neistat is a YouTube sensation. He started uh, vlogging. His vlogs are like seven or eight minutes long sometimes, and but they are so captivating. This I find myself I'm like, don't click on Casey's video because you will you will spend the next so good. Um, very interesting. So again, these are all just people that you can get ideas from um, and, and can maybe pour into you in some way. The last part is Fitness Blender. They're a husband and wife duo on YouTube and they um, do full like 45 minute workouts on YouTube. You can go watch them free. You can watch them. They've created a huge uh, empire on, on YouTube. They're, they're really pretty good. And uh, but again, they did not, they're not video professionals. They just started doing this and they're like, how can we reach an audience? And they started doing it uh, on YouTube. So um, check them out. Those are some five good people to kind of 
to check out. Um, what else, uh, what else can I answer for you guys? I feel like I gave you a lot of information. There's a very complicated and a lot to this world of video marketing. Um, we could do a series of seminars and break them each, each down into a lot of different things. But uh, I hope it's helped you in some way. What, what questions do you have at the end? Do you have any thoughts or questions? Was this helpful at all? Useful? Okay. Question, I think, <laughs> and we run into the same thing with. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you use actors? No, well, we do a lot of video work for Mountain State and Self Alliance. And so, JMH, it's mainly a release form. You get yeah. patient. You get, yeah, and, and HIPAA, I don't know. I don't know if, if patient forms are enough beyond that or not. So, it's very similar with the uh, banking industry and financial institutions are so much. Um, red tape with things to go through sometimes. Um, with Did they talk about their general experience as long as they didn't get specific about the treatment? Right. Yeah, but I mean, do you want like the atmosphere? I mean, yeah, you want to hear well, detail about, oh, well, I have this going on and Dr. Caitlin killed me for That's not a compelling <laughs> story. If you know well, I mean. think you can tell the story from the angle of the, of the team members and not just, just the patients. I think you can absolutely and we've done it many times with some hospitals where we haven't used patients at all. We use the team members to let them tell the stories um, that, that are pretty good um, about the patient. Um, and we, you could do reenactments of sorts, um, you know, without, you know, yeah. without showing staff? it. If you're talking about surgery, yeah, you staff. If you're talking about surgery, you can show surgical tools. Is that a good name? So we still have to have patients really still talk about the case. Yeah. Yeah, even though they don't. What if you just did, like, the staff members, why are you a nurse? Why are you in the healthcare? Why in the healthcare? You know, and, and show the people. It's like, hey, we got a lot of caring people here. They're not. It's just not a job. It's these are people who are dedicated to help other people. We're just sharing and saying we like at the end. We like to thank Equifax for when we got all this information. <laughs> 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 talk about their experience there without talking about their diagnosis or anything, you think? Without, without the good issue? So maybe just the atmosphere of a friendly staff or something. What if you, what I, know, if you I think that's, that's worth it. What if you identified specific things that people, like someone told me the other day that, that you all can clean teeth, you get your teeth clean, so like an affordable amount compared to what I pay in my hands. And um, so what if you pick specific things like that and focus on those and uh, get people's attention. So I live really close to a rural medical clinic mm -hmm. and the people who go there run the gamut. There are people in the community and patients judge their care by their interpersonal interactions. Okay, so if I need a new patient, I know I've got about 45 seconds to get by in from them. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they judge it um, based on humanity, 
are you listening to me? I've had patients look at me and go, you really love what you do, don't you? And, and so they, they need to see that, because then I get buy-in, and I get buy-in from their confidence. If they feel like they're not being judged, if I can connect with them on a personal level. And the other thing is, with the local clinic where we are, all kinds of people go there. Um, and, and so you need those people to provide testimonials, because the word of mouth of healthcare matters. People don't have enough healthcare literacy to pick their healthcare system by the expert knowledge, unless they happen to be in the system. So they go by word of mouth, mm -hmm. and they go by their interpersonal relationships. So I would use those elements combined with what we talked about to try to get both marketing and buying. Some of the most effective videos we did for Nice Water Children's Hospital, um, which obviously when we use the children, that's always really effective. Um, and we have to have, there's parent release forms, all kinds of stuff that they go through with that, but that does happen. But some of the ones that were most effective were, we did a series called Why I? So we did like, I think six different videos. We highlighted six different team members. Um, why I choose to work at Nice Water Children's Hospital. And so we dove into their job, you know, two, three minutes of a nurse and why she does what she does. She talks about who she is and what it feels like. Every, every time she comes to work, this is what, this is how I feel. It's, it's all about pulling that emotion out. Uh, we never showed a single patient the entire time, uh, I don't think. We may have shown one or two, but they weren't real patients. They were actors. They were actors. Uh, but most of the time, we would just show, like, the nurse, you know, walking into a room, it's like to a patient's room, and then at the side of the bed, and you couldn't really see who was in the bed, but you could see her talking to the person. So we shoot it in such a way that you don't, not using patients, and it was still just very effective. But it got you know, tens of thousands of views on Facebook, each one of those and did pretty well. So there's there's ways around it. That, that's a good question. Um, there's another thing, too. If you're going to shoot a video with the back of the patient talking to a practitioner, make sure the practitioner's sitting down and I'll hang around for a couple minutes if anybody wants to just ask me specific questions. That way you guys can. Well, thanks, Josh. Get on out. Participating in your lunch hour with, uh, with us. Um, I just want to put a plug. Our next one, we're taking next week off, but um, the following week on October the 18th, um, Powell Valley National Bank will be doing one on protecting your finances and credit, which is now with all the um, identity theft and so forth, I think it's very timely. And if you want to see a list of upcoming workshops that go through May of next year, um, we have a flyer on the back back there that you can get. They're actually loose there. Uh, and for those that are Washington County residents or you're looking at starting a business or you have an existing business that is expanding, we'll be doing our fifth annual Washington County Business Challenge. We have over $15,000. Um, and incentives to give away to a new startup or existing business. So that'll get underway in January. So we're accepting applications now. So thank you. And thanks again, Josh. And thank you for, for coming. How many of you all, this was your first time coming to a new knowledge? Will you come back? Tell somebody that you, that you, uh, what you, if you got value out of it. But thank you again. Appreciate it. So I'll scare them away. I'll come back. Thank you. Thank you. I've got cards if you're going to make it once my card. Please feel free to take one.